This test was inspired by bullshit, or what I thought was bullshit, because a lot of the coverage online of these Noctua air coolers for Threadripper basically drew a sort of general conclusion that these Noctua air coolers are better than the expensive high-end liquid coolers that use smaller cold plates. Not like this one, but like the Ace Attack ones. So we set forth to see if that was true and how it held up, because just looking at the numbers, it kind of makes sense to some extent with a larger cold plate, but then at the same time, liquid should make up a lot of that gap. So we wanted to test coolers that were purpose-built for Threadripper against coolers that are not purpose-built for Threadripper. Before getting to that, this video is brought to you by Synergy, the software that lets you share a keyboard and mouse between multiple systems. If you have limited desk space and multiple computers to command, Synergy removes the need for separate peripherals or a KVM and works as over-the-network software. Use our link below to get 50% off the home or pro version with SSL. So here's what this boils down to. It boils down to the phrase, the Noctua coolers are better. And there's a few things here I want to point out. One, uh, as you'll see in a moment, it's not impossible that they are better. But more importantly, what does better mean? And this is getting into territory where uh, we basically derived some of our testing methods out of the phrase X cooler is better than Y cooler because ultimately you can be better in raw thermal performance, but at the same time, it's not hard to just put a faster, louder fan on basically anything and make it thermally superior to some of its competition. That doesn't mean it's better as a product though. So there's also better in terms of value, price proposition. There's better in terms of noise normalized performance. This is a big one. So if we set these coolers and this cooler and the Kraken X62 all to 40 dBA output. So the fans when spinning produce about 40 decibels of noise over the room noise level about 26. Which one has the best thermal performance at a noise normalized 40 dBA? That's the other aspect of the word better when it comes to cooling performance. And then of course just raw acoustic performance as well at the high end. So that's what we're looking at. We're looking at those things today and the testing approach here, uh, we will be expanding this. As you all know, we have liquid cooler and air cooler reviews for LGA 2011 or 20XX, whatever it was, sockets already for years now. And those charts are big and we've worked on them forever, but Threadripper is new. So doing some specific cooler tests for Threadripper because it is somewhat of a special platform, including with this Enermax LickTech 240 uh, TR4 CLC, probably use a better name on that, but otherwise it's an interesting product and the Noctua NHU-14S and Noctua NHU-12S coolers. And then we have the Kraken X62 as a baseline with the round Ace Attack plate that really only covers the dies, but not any of the outer surface area of the IHS. We previously showed that the extra coverage does actually help quite a bit, but also to be fair to those Ace Attack coolers, because Threadripper includes a bracket for them, they'll work, they'll keep it within spec for sure, but it doesn't mean that they're the most effective. You really just mostly want to use them if uh, you lack another, if you already own one and you just want to put the, the bracket to use. So for testing here, we're doing a different approach than normally somewhat, where we've got Blender and we've got Prime 95 for our workloads. And uh, the difference here is that we're logging power consumption down the EPS 12 volt rails the entire time. And that's because Prime and Blender can both, to some extent, power and load cycle, and uh, we're controlling for that. We're making sure that the performance is consistent. We're also doing 40 dBA noise normalized tests. We've got manual coverage spread. So this is basically taking a, a graduated syringe, filling it to a known amount of thermal paste, applying it to the cooler, so you have the same amount every time, and then taking just like a little plastic shovel and manually covering the IHS with the paste. And then we've also got uh, the same thermal paste for all coolers. We've got power controlled for, we're overclocked to four gigahertz at 1.35 volts. And that's important because you don't want to use auto anything because it's not trustworthy for a test like this. And we're also using T-Dye for the measurement. So we're not using T-Control because it shouldn't exist. T-Dye is the more or less the actual temperature of all those 36 sensors within Threadripper averaged together, as opposed to T-Control, which is all those sensors averaged together with a 27 degree Celsius modifier for whatever reason. So we're using T-Dye. 
And I think that's most of it for the methodology. Now, we're focusing on the X62 for the Ace Attack representation. It's one of the best Ace Attack made coolers out there. It's an MZXC branded cooler. That will be tested alongside this Enermax unit, which has a full coverage plate, big difference there. And then we've got Noctua for the air coolers. We'll be expanding into uh, other Threadripper cooler reviews in the near future, but this will get us started. First, to address the concern of outputting roughly equal power between tests, we clamped the EPS 12 volt cables during all tests for all coolers, then compared power consumption between runs. Prime 95 load cycles at somewhat predictable intervals, shown in this over time chart, and we can synchronize our data averaging to only pull data from the peak cycle. The heaviest power cycle produces the most heat, as you'd expect, so we're averaging from that height. As seen in the chart, the test aligns well from pass to pass, validating that our testing was conducted under the same power load each time. There's some variance, and you should also expect to see about a 4% power consumption reduction from leakage for every 10 degrees Celsius that the CPU drops, but these numbers are largely the same. That's what we want. The same is true for Blender, which produces a highly predictable heat load and power load throughout testing. We were able to align the data to validate accuracy, averaging again from the peak values. The first test is Prime95 torturing the CPU at around 310 watts load with our 4 GHz overclock and 1.35 volts and using 100% fan and pump speeds. The Enermax Lictec 240mm TR4 cooler performs the best of the lot when disregarding noise, plotting an average T die of 50.7 degrees Celsius over ambient with the 10 second peak at around 51 degrees Celsius delta T. This positions the cooler significantly ahead of the NZXC Kraken X62 with a more limited cold plate contact area but a bigger radiator, which is at 63 degrees Celsius over ambient. The worst cooler in the test was the Noctua NHU12S, a 120mm smaller version of Noctua's higher performing NHU14S. The 120mm option runs an average T-dive of 66C over ambient, achieving similar temperatures to the $160 X62 cooler but priced at $70 USD. The idle temperatures largely follow the load temperatures in terms of positioning, as you can see in the chart, but overall there's not a big difference at this low load level. The Nocto 140mm option performs noticeably better than the 120mm option, it makes sense. The 120 has both a smaller fan and a smaller heat sink, as you can see, and so that makes sense. In terms of performance versus the liquid coolers, the 140 option maintains 59 degrees Celsius over ambient, and that's still roughly 8 degrees warmer than the full coverage Enermax 240mm cooler, but it's 3 to 4 degrees cooler than the Ace Attack X62. So just to be clear, this one's a couple degrees cooler than the X62. It's not tremendous like we've seen some tests online, but it is definitely there and it's measurable and it's outside of error. So this is a couple degrees better than the X62 and it's, it's quite a few degrees worse than this one, but we're not noise normalized yet. So we'll see how that changes once we do account for the noise levels because this is quite loud compared to that when both are at max RPMs. Makes sense, it has two fans and they're smaller. As far as the Ace Tech unit, it's sort of spinning its wheels on the pavement. This is an issue where Ace Tech's coolers with those smaller cold plates they have the potential to cool. It's got a bigger radiator, it's got bigger fans, they're half decent fans. It's got the potential, but it can't apply that power to the road. There's no torque there. So that's the problem of this smaller cold plate. And hopefully Ace Attack, if Threadripper is popular enough for them to produce something for, hopefully they actually make a cold plate that's Threadripper size to compete. But one big thing I question here until we tear this Enermax one down, I don't know if the actual liquid flows through this entire cold plate area or if it's just exposed cold plate because it's entirely possible that performance could be even better if the channeling design of the cold plate is specifically made for Threadripper. And it's likely that if you, for example, centralize your pump and your liquid in sort of the normal area you would for a cooler, but you just expanded the cold plate like they've done, it's possible there's still even performance on the table, even though it's objectively the best in that first test. Normalizing for noise at 40 decibels should give us a better indication of whether the liquid coolers hold an advantage that matters. It's easy to win a test when unconstrained in noise, just put a louder, faster fan on it. But for these tests, Noctua's coolers were already operating at about 40 decibels when maxed. That's their baseline performance, so we didn't need to rerun them. The other coolers, though, did undergo lower fan speed testing to fit the noise profile. 
At 40 dBA with Prime 95, the Kraken X62 only increases from its previous baseline by about 1 degree Celsius. We're at around 64C over ambient now versus the previous 63C. Not a big difference and ultimately doesn't really change the fact that the cooler, which is otherwise good, has become limited by its own cold plate. It's still acceptable insofar as you could buy one and use it if necessary, but there are more efficient and cheaper options that would better warrant a purchase. The only cooler warmer than this is the NHU-12S, which again is a 120mm small air cooler, which operates at around 66 degrees Celsius over ambient. Not that much warmer, but a bit. The Noctua NHU-14S TR4 unit keeps the overclocked 1950X to around 59C over ambient, making it about 5 degrees cooler than the X62 and about 7 degrees cooler than the 120mm Noctua cooler. Enermax's Liquitec 240 TR4 cooler leads the pack at 54.8C over ambient, reducing its previous 8 to 9 degree lead over the Noctua 140mm cooler to a lead of 4 degrees Celsius. The Enermax cooler technically performs the best here once again, even noise normalized, but is also priced at 130 USD versus the $80 price of the NHU-14S. There are other cons to the Noctua cooler, of course, but we'll get to those momentarily. For a lower thermal load, we now look at Blender with the fans at max RPM. The Kraken X62 maintains a 51.6 degree temperature, keeping it still in the 2 to 3 C range above the NHU-14S. The Enermax Liquitec 240 TR4 cooler keeps the lowest temperature as previously at 43.2 degrees Celsius with the NHU-12S at 60 C. Blender at 40 decibels also shows familiar scaling, we're at 54.5 C on the X62 with the NHU-14S at 49 C as it was already operating at 40 dBA with the Enermax 240 cooler a few degrees cooler than the 140 millimeter Noctua cooler, but it's otherwise unimpressive in its lead. It is technically superior, it's just sort of a shallow victory. That said, liquid is always going to outperform air in otherwise similar or identical conditions, so there's no surprise here. It's just better at moving heat around the difference comes in how the cold plate's made and whether the liquid is actually enabled to leverage its advantage or whether it's left again spinning on the pavement. The NHU-12S is rather unimpressive and should probably be skipped in most cases as the U-14S is significantly better at a similar price. There are a couple of other factors to consider of course, for example clearance. This cooler is a bit larger and even by Noctua's own admission, it's just not going to work with every motherboard if you're trying to accommodate a top slot PCIe device. So for our testing, when we tested this one on the Asus Zenith motherboard, we had to take the video card and move it down a couple slots to the next by 16 slot because the top one just didn't work. It would collide with this. And even if it kind of makes it, kind of clears, be careful because you don't want to bridge contacts on the back of the cards with these fins. That would be bad. Uh, so that's a downside potentially. You can use a lower PCIe slot if you have to. You can do some maneuvering with these, but not a lot, so keep that in mind. As for the rest, though, it comes down to price and performance. Technically speaking, in the most sort of pedantic way possible, this cooler is better. It's better noise normalized. It's better outright at full tilt, but it's 130-ish dollars, and this is something like 80 or somewhere around there. So that's certainly a consideration. There's a consideration of how much do you need the extra couple degrees. In most instances, we're seeing noise normalized about a four to five degree Celsius improvement max for this cooler. Four to five degrees isn't a ton. If that matters to you, you probably know who you are and you're probably buying something better than this anyway. They have a 360 option as well, we'll test eventually. But it's a good cooler for something that's got a threader for size plate. It's also Enermax, which means that if other companies decide to get into the game here and produce their own full coverage copper plates for liquid coolers, we would expect that there's potential for more improvement there. Enermax is first to market with this, which means that they're probably cutting corners somewhere. I mean, I would expect to see things improve with time. That's just how product development works, even from Enermax. So you'd expect that the future iterations would improve more but as it stands today, it's really not that distant of a fight between this and, and this one. Uh, the NHU-12S, I'd say skip entirely, unless you're in a situation where you, you really need that clearance for that top PCIe slot, and you also need an air cooler for some reason, which is also a consideration for liquid, because if you're in a really tight case and doing something with a smaller board, which there's not a lot of this thread ripper because the socket's so big, but that's a potential use case for liquid. There's a smaller footprint, so 
keep that in mind. But there's your data, though. Um, as far as my thoughts on this, so I went into it, like I said, expecting that the something like an X62, which is one of the best Asia Tech coolers, would perform more or less equally to this cooler, if not slightly better, because it is a good cooler. But the thing is that cold, that cold plate in the limited contact area really comes back to buy Ace Attack in ways that surprise me a bit because what happens is this one ends up leading by a couple degrees. Now, it's not as big of a lead as we've seen some other places, but it's still somewhere in the one to four degree range depending on the test and the noise levels, things like that. Once you normalize for noise, the Kraken loses a little bit more ground, but not a lot. So that, that was genuinely a bit surprising to me, just how much the cold plate matters. We had kind of tested it on Noctua previously between Noctua coolers, but not against liquid. And that's interesting. I mean, that's basically, that's where stuff like this, companies like Enermax, who aren't really tier one brands, are actually going to have a chance at making some sales here because they were early to Threadripper with a closed loop product that actually does perform objectively better than the smaller circular cold plates of Ace Attack products that have been on the market a while now. So maybe this will kick Ace Attack a bit and wake them up to make a full coverage plate, but it depends on if they think there's volume there to actually profit on it. Threadripper is still kind of developing as a market. It's definitely the biggest upset that we've seen so far in terms of knocking Intel around, but even at these with the lead that Threadripper has in some scenarios, it's like a thousand dollar part for the high end. So it's going to be lower volume, even if they're selling more than Intel might be in that particular segment. So keep that in mind. That's all for this one. You can go to patreon.com slash gamers nexus to help out as always. You can subscribe for more and you should, because we'll have more of this coverage up soon and store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one. I'll see you all next time.